Hello, welcome back Copic Craft fans. Um, I hope you are ready for some holiday card making. The next few weeks I am doing a whole series with some holiday cards. A lot of traditional colors but a lot of fun ones. Um, today's card is using a paper tray ink stamp. Um, it's from their Year of Flowers collection. It, it's a poinsettia and I have a small and a large one. Um, so that is from Paper Tray. And then I am also doing a little bit different in that I'm doing this on a paper called Yupo, or I think that's how you pronounce it, and it's their watercolor paper. Um, it's a white paper. It's actually a little off-white. It's very, very slick to the surface. So the coloring is going to look very different with my Copic markers. I did still stamp with my Memento ink. I did have to let it dry for an extensive amount of time. So I did several stamps and I experimented not only with color, but the drying period for the stamp image itself. It took a long time to really sit. I did some heat setting on this one and that seemed to help. But um, you're gonna see as I start coloring, it's gonna look very different. You're gonna have a much more painterly watercolor look to this effect. Um, I'm really excited about how it looks, but I will tell you again and reinforce this at the end probably as well, that you will really need to let those stamps set. This is not gonna be one of those rush situations where you stamp and color. You are gonna to have to do some heat setting and you may even have to wait a little bit longer. So make sure you're double checking those inks before you start coloring or you will get some of them on your nibs. Now remember most of the time that won't ru ruin the marker. Um, you may have to switch out a nib, but most likely you can still keep coloring. Um, you might have a little ink on that nib that discolors the nib, but um, not a big deal with Copics. You can usually still keep coloring. We'll go ahead and put it on the car a card at the end. And um, I've got some SEI papers and just fun stuff that we'll put together for a real simple, you know me, card. the card part is the simple part at the end. But we'll color to start. Um, I've got four reds here that I'm going to use on this image, and we'll go from there. So I am going to start with an R35, and that's my lightest red that I'm going to use. I'm going to come into those center petals and start with those. It takes a very light coat. It doesn't absorb into the paper as much. R37 is going on next. I'm starting at the center of the petals and working my way outward. And then on these larger back petals, I'm going ahead and filling in. I know this is sped up, but I really am just doing one coat over this. I'm not saturating the paper with ink like I normally would on my cardstock. R39 is next, and actually I'm not real pleased with what it's doing. I'm trying to go back into the centers, but it's just not reading how I want it to. So R59 is what I switch over to, and this is doing the effect that I want, which is adding those shadows into the center of each petal. Now I'm going to work my way back down. I'm going to skip the 39 and go right to R37. It really doesn't smooth out. It's not blending these colors together. It's softening those edges and um, just creating a nicer transition. R35 is next around the edges of those inner petals and a little bit on the outer petals to take some of that color back off to really lighten up the edges. I'm going to bring in a Y21 for the center of the flower. It's all dots so I'm really just filling in and then coming in with a Y28 and dotting some of that darker yellow into the center. The smaller flower I'm going to do in reverse. I'm going to start at the center of each petal with my R59 and I come right up the center vein of the petal or the leaf and work outward. R37 is next, it's my mid-tone, and on the bigger leaves I work way out right onto those edges. On the smaller ones I leave a little more of the paper showing. And then my lightest color, the R35, comes in next. Notice now it's going to push that color in just a little bit, lighten up those edges. Now on this one I'm not going to need to blend because I've done it because I've done it in reverse, but I am trying to push back that color a little bit more to lighten it up. And I decide to actually go all the way back with my colorless blender and pull some of that color off the page. As I do that I have to come over the side of my paper and wipe some of it off. The center gets treated the same with Y21 and Y28. 
Then here are my two flowers. I'm going to do a little bit of work on the large one. What's great about this paper is I can go right back in with my colorless blender and it picks it up right away with that slick surface. This works great. So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to get these um, flowers ready for my card. I haven't cut these out yet, so you get to see a little fussy cutting on my part. The scissors I'm using aren't the best, so I'm struggling a little bit. But hopefully you can see how I'm aiming the paper into the scissors and keeping those scissors moving. I'm a big proponent of cutting off that excess paper as often as I can, and that just keeps it out of my way as well. Small one next, get rid of all that excess to start and get around the edge. Again, I'm keeping the scissors moving and they're going kind of straight out from me and then working the paper through the scissors. So I've got my two flowers and now I can get ready to add them onto a card. This paper has um, got kind of a flocked front to it, and I wanted to use it for my card, but it really needed a card base. So I added that cream card base underneath. I tried the red paper, but I didn't care for it. So I'm getting rid of that and adding my flowers with some pop dots, or not pop dots, but foam um, tape, foam dots. So I pop those up, add a little dimension, Then I have this coordinating set of stickers from SEI, so I'm going to add those. I'm going to fiddle around with a lot with the little words here just to make sure they fit. So I'm going to peel up and set down these about 15, 20 times here until I get it just how I like it but and try to get them straight. So I know I'm going to have to go back and add some glue afterwards. And then I'm just adding some bits of bling. These are from Queen & Company. But I think I've just about got it, and I'm going to add just a little bit of this beautiful glitter deco tape from Express. All right, I have one holiday card ready to go. Um, this is what I get for not planning things out ahead of time, and I'm pulling things up and sticking things down. I'll probably have to go down and add a little bit of adhesive under some of these stickers since I pulled them up and stuck them back down several times, but... It's finished, and I can tuck it to the side, ready to send to a friend. Um, I hope you enjoyed the technique. You can probably see on the poinsettia that is a whole different look, and it's very fast. Um, you cannot do the blending like you do on our standard white cardstock. So, whole different feel, very quick, just fun, something different. Again, that was um, it's called Upo, or I believe that's how you pronounce that paper, and it's feels almost um, it's slick almost like a photo paper so it really has a different feel to the coloring and the look so I hope you enjoyed this card for the holidays and I hope you will come back to see more have a happy colorful week